Hey everybody, so you're looking at the Elephone U2. So Elephone, in case you're unaware, they are one of these smaller Shenzhen based Chinese phone brands that a couple of years ago were quite popular because they would make budget smartphones. You know, back when all these other Chinese phones like Vivo and Oppo were at $400, $500 range, brands like Elephone and Doogie and Liegu would pump out these kind of affordable phones at under 200 bucks, 200 US dollars. But lately, because big phone brands such as Oppo and Xiaomi and even Huawei have started focusing on this kind of sub $200 market that has made life pretty difficult for smaller brands such as Elephone and Doogie because for example Realme which is a sub brand of Oppo are pumping out phones for $200 and for that price you get a device that's very polished because it's developed by Oppo so then something from a smaller brand like Elephone these are essentially startups they're finding it more and more difficult to compete and I've been testing this phone for the past seven, eight hours now. And unfortunately, it's the same story here. This is a pretty decent phone for the price. And in a vacuum, I, I wouldn't have a lot of complaints. But at the same time, because there are phones like the Realme 3 out there, which costs just like 180 bucks, it's hard to justify buying this. But first, let me talk about some of the good things anyway. So the first good thing is this is almost an all-screen design as advertised. Because sometimes these smaller Shenzhen brands you know, you go on a website, you look at a phone's product render and then you get the real phone and it doesn't look like that at all. The bezels are much bigger. This is actually close to advertise. It's an all screen design. In fact, the bezels, you know, they, they can hold its own against um, big name phones. Like I have here the OnePlus 7 Pro and you look at the bezels, they're quite similar. Even the chin, very, very similar. So that means if you put this Elephone U2 next to a Samsung Galaxy S10 or Huawei P30 Pro, the bezels can hang, the screen to body ratio can hang too. So there's no notch in here because this is a pop-up camera. So this is interesting. This is the first time we're getting a pop-up camera from one of these smaller brands because before this, we've only seen it in Oppo and Vivo phones and OnePlus and then now I guess uh, Redmi, which is backed by Xiaomi. So these are all big companies. And right off the bat, I can see that this pop-up camera, it's a little bit slow. I mean, side by side of the OnePlus 7 Pro, it's the OnePlus 7 Pro's camera closes a lot faster. But I guess that's not that fair a comparison because this phone, it's quite a bit cheaper than the OnePlus 7 Pro, but still, just pointing out that this elevating camera, it's a little bit slow. So now looking at the screen, this is an LCD panel, it's 6.26 inches, so, so almost 6.3, a little bit under 6.3, with resolution above 1080p. So they call it full HD, but it's basically 1080p. And this screen size is just about perfect because right now screen size is getting bigger and bigger. We have the OnePlus 7 Pro here and this is a little bit uh, of a tall phone, a little bit of a large screen. So it's kind of refreshing to go back to something at 6.3, 6.2 and a half inches. Very easy to reach. Now the software here is Android 9 and it's mostly stock with a little bit of uh, Elephone's uh, touches. And for the most part, it's nice looking. I really like, you know, Elephone's app icons are quite nice. Animations are pretty smooth. Like you look at when you open up the app tray, I like the little bounce that you get when the app tray reaches the end, likewise with the notification panel. Nothing that looks ugly, unlike a Doogie or Blackview phones where those software are pretty ugly. Now, you jump into the settings, this is almost like stock vanilla Android, so there's not much um, customization. You do get a little bit of advanced tricks right here, such as flip the phone over to mute. And unfortunately, some of these um, menu settings are kind of chinglish or they don't really explain for example you have shortcut button settings right here and then from here it tells you, you can press the shortcut button to launch an app but it doesn't really tell you where is this shortcut button i mean is there an extra button here no there isn't so eventually i realized that it's actually double tap on the side fingerprint sensor so you see i just launched the calculator by double tapping on it and yes fingerprint sensors on the side and uh, it's okay, it's not the best fingerprint sensor. It does work for the most part, but I find that sometimes it won't register right away. In addition to the fingerprint scanner here, you have a power button and volume rockers, and these are relatively clicky. They don't wobble, they're pretty nice. On the bottom, you have a USB-C port and a single bottom fine speaker grill. On the left side of the phone, it's completely clean other than the SIM tray right here. This supports dual SIM and an SD card. So it's completely clean on the left side. And on the top, it's clean too, other than antenna lines and this pop-up camera module. So you might have noticed that I haven't really talked about the cameras yet. That's because 
Unfortunately, I think Elephone it's for shit with what they're advertising right here. So on the website, if you go on the website for this phone, Elephone's advertising five cameras because there's three in the back and there's two selfie cameras right here. But to be honest, I'm pretty sure these are fake cameras because they don't really do anything. Like I know this camera works. This is the main sensor. It's a 60 megapixel sensor. But these other sensors here, I don't know what the heck they are. I've covered them up and it has not affected photography at all. In fact, if you go into camera mode, there is no there is no button for a telephoto zoom. There is no um, real portrait mode. I mean, there is a portrait mode, but it's software bokeh. It's not real bokeh. So I have no idea what these two lenses do. And likewise, with the selfie camera, like there's a dual selfie camera here, but it doesn't do anything. I'm really, really disappointed with Elephone for that because the previous devices didn't really resort to these tricks. But I will say more good things about the phone. Like, you know, this screen is pretty nice to look at and it gets bright enough for outdoor use. And the back, this is, they're saying it's glass, but I feel like it's plastic. I can't quite tell. It's, it's like a nicer plastic, I think. So maybe it's a composite material. But this frame here, I can say is actually aluminum. It's pretty sturdy, it feels pretty firm. So when you hold the phone, it does feel pretty nice. But this here, it's probably not glass. And then you'll notice that there's a major slope in the design and it fits in the hand pretty nice. Like it helps the phone rest in your palm, but at the same time, the phone wobbles significantly when you're trying to use it flat on a desk because of this kind of pretty drastic round the back. So now in terms of processor, this runs on a Helio P70. So I've already ran a Geekbench. Let me pull up the screenshot right here. So it scored a 1463 single core, 5485 multi-core. I also ran a T2 Geekbench and it scored a 141996. So these are respectable numbers. Like they're not bad for this price range. This phone retails for about 200 US dollars. So at this price, I think it's respectable, but um, you know, nothing, nothing amazing. But at the same time, you know, these are just benchmark numbers. I played Need for Speed No Limit and Boxing Star. Both of these games are quite graphically intensive and I played them for 20, 25 minutes and I did not experience any issues. The game ran fine without any frame rate drops. The game um, did not stutter, did not freeze and the phone did not heat up too badly too. So day to day performance is gonna be fine. Like you jump into Instagram, you're gonna be able to surf Instagram fine. You're gonna be able to use a WhatsApp with no issues. But back to the software though. So you notice I'm using navigation buttons, which I almost never do now. I use, I prefer to use swipe navigation if possible, but this phone does not have the option to do swipe navigation. So it does not exist on this phone, but at least um, to its credit, there's a lot of options for navigation keys. You can change the look of navigation buttons. You can add this icon here to hide the navigation bar and there's a little shortcut menu to bring down notification shade. So I do like that. And then when you go into Instagram stories, you can just tap this to hide the button and now you get full screen. So that looks pretty nice. You can see this display looks pretty good. Now moving on to the cameras, I think performance is, uh, it's okay. Like a year, two years ago, I would think for $200, this camera is good. But now we have something like the Realme 3. Pro, which has a really damn good camera for 170 bucks and the elephone camera tends to fall behind but at the same time it's still pretty decent so this is a 16 megapixel selfie with a pop-up camera so you get pretty good details color accuracy is okay the colors are a little bit on the dull side but you do and then you see when you zoom in too close you do see a little bit loss of detail but for the most part this is definitely a usable shot there's a little bit of a natural depth of field right here i like that so this is not a fake bokeh at least and now likewise for this image of the Siku Center. So you see shutter speed is relatively fast because none of the cars are blurry even though they're moving pretty fast right there. Dynamic range is okay. You can actually see the clouds on the sky. It's not blown out. And down here in the shadows, still reasonable. Now you see right here again, like colors, this color science is just a little bit uh, on the dull side. Like this beige uh, brick right here usually is a little bit punchier on many other phones. So this, you know, this photo just looks like it's a little bit washed out. Now, likewise, a food shot. Again, like there's a little bit of loss of details in the middle, but overall colors is good. So here's another selfie. 
So now unfortunately videos are really really disappointing. In fact the videos are almost broken. Now I'm hoping Elephone will fix this in the software update. Okay, so but as of right now, these videos are unusable. So this is 1080p 30. Colors are okay. Look at look at how choppy this is. There's no stabilization. Videos are basically unusable. Now if I down downscale it to 720p, it gets a little bit better, but not that much. So now at least it's not as choppy anymore. But still no stabilization whatsoever. And exposure right here is really struggling. So you know, like I said, a couple of years ago, I would be okay with this camera quality, but now that we have the Redmi Note 7, and something like the Vivo V15 Pro or like the Realme 3 Pro, there's just too many good phones out there that are not expensive that can do much better than this. And you know, I feel bad because like I said, Elo Phone's a small company. They do not have the muscle to compete with Realme, which is backed by Oppo, which is backed by BBK. So, you know, Realme has a lot of money and resources to build the stuff. And the software Realme uses, it's not even built just for Realme. It's an Oppo software. Whereas Elephone, they have to build their own software, at least fine tune the algorithm, and they have to build their own hardware. And it's just a little bit too much work right now for a small Sengen OEM to compete with these major companies. But if you ignore the major companies, if you want to support startups, if you want to support small businesses, then Elephone continues to be one of the better ones. This is definitely better than whatever Doogie or Liegu puts out. But it's just, it's really tough to recommend this at 200 US dollars when there's stuff like the Realme 3 Pro. Oh, I almost forgot, we have to do a video speaker test. Okay, so we'll go up to 50% volume first. Speaker grill just down at the bottom. The speaker's pretty weak, I mean, just one finger completely muffled. This is at 75 right now? No, 80 probably. Let's go up to max. Yeah, screen looks good, but this speaker, it's weak, really flat. Anyway, so that's it for the Elephone U2. If this phone gets a software update and camera performance improves, I will make a follow-up video. If not, then that is it. I won't make another video on this phone because there are just a lot more better devices to focus on right now. So that's it for now. Um, the next time you see me, I'll probably be in the US because I'm going to California to attend Apple's WWDC. So if you're interested in following that, or at least from my perspective, feel free to subscribe to this channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.